<laughs> okay, ladies, gentlemen, and every bubble blowing baby in between that, we need to talk about something. Sometimes, just on occasion, my work gets easy for me and the jokes write themselves. Because I stumbled across an article titled, just a few days ago, titled... Let's give it a quick look. Elon says there are too many game studios owned by giant corporations, so his giant corporation is going to start a studio to make games great again. That sounds like a splendid plan, and also something that will never go wrong, especially considering we're wrapping in AI into this story. Yes, this isn't just a game studio plan to make games great again, not politically motivated at all whatsoever, but also, he wants to wrap this into an artificial intelligence-based game creation company. That's a good idea. AI, the theme of 2024, half the people I know are horrified of it, thinking it's going to end the world, while at the same time not even being able to tell us how many R's are in the word strawberry. That's a real thing, by the way. Try it on ChatGBT. Or we have people who are greeting it as the next step in our human evolution. and Which, I mean, how can I say that they're wrong when videos like this exist? <laughs> See, you're laughing now, but one step after that is a robot teleporting back in time that vaguely resembles the former California governor Arnold Schwarzen, homie, and he's gonna tell him, you know, follow him if he want to live or something. I haven't seen the movie in years. Don't don't ask me to properly quote something. But regardless, speaking of robots, Elon Musk, he wanted to start a new gaming company, and this all starts with <laughs> Dogecoin. <laughs> Dogecoin. Yeah, that cryptocurrency based off the Shiba Inu dog, the meme dog, the haha -ha goofy meme. Yeah, so there is a Dogecoin, and the co-creator recently put a tweet out on Twitter, which is where tweets are tweeted, and said... I don't understand how game developers and game journalism got so ideologically captured. Gamers have always been trolls, anti-greedy corporations, and anti-BS. And gamers have always rejected gun mani dumb manipulative BS, and they can tell when someone's an outside poser. I don't really know what he's saying here. He's kind of saying, he's putting words in tweets, and some people might understand it. I mean, we have a resident moron translator, Elon Musk, who actually did make a quote retweet response to this, saying, too many game studios are owned by massive corporations, says the multi-billionaire. But, uh, XAI is gonna start an AI game studio to make games great again. Thank God, dude. Thank God. The one thing I think gaming was missing was an AI making them. Right? I, I've never seen that go wrong before. Shout out AI Minecraft. <laughs> What's going on? I think that's a sheep. It might be. Uh, the, AI, the AI probably knows. I, I don't at all. However, to a certain extent, I can see why a lot of people are kind of tired of games right now. Games have been underperforming. There's been a lot of AAA games coming out that are a bunch of hot doo-doo. There was a, earlier this year, Skull and Bones or something. It was a Sea of Thieves game, like pirate game. I'm saying Sea of Thieves game as if pirates are an original concept to Sea of Thieves. But it's a pirate game where you do boating things and it flopped horribly because it was $70! Oh my god, I could afford a day of skiing! over buying the funny Skull and Bones game when Sea of Thieves is like 45 bucks. Or like, Suicide Squad kills the Justice League flopped horrendously. And while I'm no investigative journalist, I do believe that they probably flopped because they killed Batman with a single shot to the head. <laughs> what? I'm sorry I spoiled it for you. I know you're already not planning to play it. However, to a certain extent, I can see how they could utilize AI in a way that isn't absolutely dog shit, horrible, poopy, stinky, because there are like, AI can be used to write code. There is a company, little known company, not a lot of you might have known of it, Netflix. They also recently opened up a AI game company. Actually, no, they shut down their Netflix game company, which is a huge revelation for me. Netflix has a gaming company. Clearly, it didn't do well, considering I'm learning about it through its shutting down message. But, of course, it uh, one door closes, another door opens. They're opening up an AI, a generative AI gaming development company. Maybe stick to movies and shows? You do that? Sort of okay. But as I was saying, how could this be done in a way that isn't absolutely dog shit poopy stinky? Well, there was an announcement put out on Netflix's LinkedIn by the, <laughs> the generative AI vice president. Is he a man? Is he a robot? I don't know, but his name's Mike Verdu, and he dropped an announcement saying, At long last, I'm ready to talk about what I'm doing next. I'm working on dr driving a once-in-a-generation inflection point for game development and player experiences using generative AI. A sentence that makes me shiver to my timbers. But, of course, he followed it up with, I'm focused on a creator-first vision for AI. One that puts creative talent at the center with AI being a catalyst and an accelerant. Which sounds interesting. This sounds like something where they might be utilizing AI just to write the code and not have the AI do all the graphics parts. Because, like... Game studios are putting like hundreds of millions of dollars into a game where like maybe the first 200 million go into the graphics and then like 30 bucks go into the writing department. Let's maybe 
fund the writing department a little more and make games because you like making games, not make games because you're trying to squeeze money out of a bunch of gamers who are just a little desperate. Shout out Call of Duty. Love you guys. Just kidding. But with all of that in mind, there is actually no good ending to this story. Because the thing is, I actually looked up an article by the UN Environment Program talking about how AI not only is, you know, like, they don't talk about the AI and the artist stuff. That's a big argument is AI is taking from artists. They're, because the artists, like, if they have a talent and they want to use it to make a cool game or help create a project and they're just getting replaced by an AI that can do it in 30 seconds but worse, well... Let's also add in an extra little variable where AI is literally destroying the planet. And I'm not saying that with hyperbole. This is a real thing. There's a few different notes that were put down, and I'm going to read through a few of them really quickly. One of them being that AI is housed in pretty high-tech data centers, and those data centers, more often than not, use a lot of rare metals, rare earth metals and materials that take a pretty horrible means to mine them, like Elon Musk with his lithium mine batteries. A lithium mine, no, lithium, he doesn't mine the batteries, he mines the lithium that go into the batteries, which then create more waste than some power plants do. That's cool. I thought that ha electric cars were supposed to be helpful. But regardless, to put this into comparison, a two kilogram computer used to power an AI requires 800 kilograms of earth metals, raw and of course rare and other rocks. Oh my god, like, you're gonna have to recruit seven different Steves from Minecraft to power a single AI. And even then, where are you gonna get all that from? <laughs> I don't know, it's whatever. Because there's more. There was one note talking about how it just creates tons of electronic waste, which is, more often than not, not recyclable. So you're just, like, just a bunch of fucking iPhones. Shout out Apple, by the way, because my phone, I have a, what is it, an iPhone 13, where is it? This one. I have an iPhone 13. This thing, I've had for, like, what, three years? And I can't open more than two apps at a time without it sweating! What? Whatever. I'm screaming. I'm over the top. Let's continue on Hawaii AI is uh, maybe a bad thing. There is one thing that made me belly laugh when I first read it. That AI not only is consuming all of the rare precious metals and rocks of the planet, but it's also slurping up our water too. The <laughs> oh my god. So... Data centers use water during construction and once operational to cool electric components. Globally, AI infrastructure may con soon consume six times more water than Denmark. <laughs> the country! The country has six million people in it, and AI is slurping up more H2O than they are in a year. That is insane, and also kind of bad, maybe? I think clean water is uh, a resource we need. Like, yeah, if it goes up in the cloud, cloud comes down and we can get more of it. But uh, maybe, like, uh, let the people, the humans, drink the nice clean water. Maybe we should let the AI start drinking all of our salt water. That would fucking destroy the computers. But regardless, one more note. Talking about the fact that the energy required to do a lot of this stuff actually is horribly unenvironmentally friendly. And I know I'm being real preachy right now. I'm like telling you guys AI is destroying the environment and like the buzzword climate change and like some Karen in the back row just had their, her wig blow off of her head and fly into the crowd. But the thing is one like text-based search on ChatGPT requires 10 times more energy than a single Google search. And that's just for text. Using image generation, uh, I don't I don't even have an actual statistic here, but it is extra it's way more resource intensive. And that's not even talking about video creation because that's image per image per image. And of course, keep in mind, where are they getting this power from? I don't know, maybe power plants, the plants that have power in them, but there's no plants, it's all fossil fuels. So of course we're burning up all of our oil, gas, whatever that stuff is, the one that the bones used to be. So of course AI uh, being used in so many various ways sounds like a really good idea. Let's do more of that, actually. And of course, Elon has come out with some very minute statements regarding his possible AI gaming company, with one of the big ones talking about the fact that he wants the game studio to create games prioritizing enjoyment over political messaging. And I can respect that moral. You know, I would like to enjoy my games too. I like doing that. He, he said this exact same thing when he first bought Twitter. He said, for Twitter to preserve public trust, it must be politically neutral, which effectively means upsetting the far right and far left equally, which he's done so incredibly well, and it's done nothing non-politically neutral since then. <laughs> oh, wait. And I want to add a little note really quickly before we go any farther into this. I already know some greased up gooner is already in the comments typing something like, how dare you disrespect my big daddy poppy a a a uh, Elon Musk, you're gay. And first off, to rebuttal that second part, no, I'm not quite gay. Men can be hot on occasion, but I'm not always kissing them. However, the other part, Elon Musk, first of all, is a multi-billionaire. I'm decently sure a little, a little kid, I'm not quite 
I mean, I'm like tall. I'm like seven feet tall or something. I, I, he can handle my, like me making fun of him in a video. I think that's fine. And also, I just kind of personally hate the guy because he's built an entire platform on hate. Like, I don't know. I feel like that's not necessarily a hot take. Most of his ideals, aside from making rockets, which I think that's pretty cool. Like, I'd like to go to Mars. Mars sounds like a cool place. There's rocks there. And not rocks outside. I don't know what that point was supposed to be. But at the same time, most of the ideals that he's been pushing have been like, I hate trans people. Which, I don't give a shit what your beliefs are on trans people. Why do you have to be hateful? What, like, the hate is just so incredibly unnecessary. Let someone do whatever the fuck they want over there. Let them be happy. Anyway, enough of that preachy stuff. I don't think that this is even going to happen. <laughs> I'm sorry. We're hopping all over the place today. I don't think that this game company is even going to happen of my personal take. Because, to be fair, Elon has made a lot of claims for things he's planned to do in the future. And none of them usually happen. <laughs> like, there was a while ago where he made a poll talking about, like, Going forward, there'll be a vote on major policy changes. My apologies won't happen again. That being in reference with the apology to the time that he got rid of like counts which was a really good idea, and I think that I'm very glad he did that. But of course, with that whole uh, poll and voting thing, he actually made a poll to test things out, saying like, hey, should I step down as head of Twitter? Which, <laughs> jump in the gun, Mr. Elon. He said, I will abide by the results of this poll. And as you can tell by the results, he is still CEO. <laughs> he is still the head of Twitter. Like, he says he's not, and of course, there is a woman that goes by the name of Linda Yaccarino, who's technically the standing CEO of Twitter, but it's not in her bio. She has, like, a hundred likes a post, 300 likes on occasion, and so it's like, is she the CEO, or did you just cap mega style, like me when I lie type B. And there's a plethora of other things that Elon's planned to do and never went through with. He was going to get rid of bots, when of course bots are the main population of Twitter. They, he was going to set up a thing where you could figure out if you got shadow banned and why you were shadow banned and how to like appeal it. And that was announced two years ago on December 8th. And if you look at the watch, the time right now, it's December 3rd in the year of our Lord 2024. So... I for gore, question mark? Or of course, one of my favorites, the time that he claimed that he was going to give severance pay to his employees and then didn't do that thing. Well, he did. Years later. He, <laughs> because the whole idea is when you fire people, because when he first came into Twitter, he brought that sink in. Ha <laughs> get it? Uh, whatever. He walked into Twitter and he was like, I'm going to fire 6,000 people. Ha <laughs> ha, lol, take the L dance, whatever. And then what happened was you're supposed to pay them three months pay to let them get, they have time to get back on their feet. Because once you get fired from a job, you don't plan to get fired from a job. So you don't have, like, a second income stream. So, of course, he was doing that by giving them one month's pay. Uh, one third of what you're supposed to give them. Bless you, by the way. Stop burping. I'm trying to talk right now, guys. But, um, then, of course, he got enough flack that he eventually started to give them money. Which, I did the math on, like, the average pay of a Twitter, u a Twitter user. No, you don't get paid anything if you use Twitter. But I, the average pay of a Twitter employee... It's like 2000 something a month. If he had to do all 6,000 employees for three months, I think he would have had to spend $36 million, which is about 36 cents to this guy. <laughs> he has $300 billion in his wallet, dude. <laughs> like, come on. But of course, with all of this in mind, the whole idea that this AI game is going to look like poop shitty and that it's going to poop shitty on the environment, it doesn't exactly sound like this whole AI game thing is a good idea or an idea that's ever going to come to fruition considering Elon has the attention span of me on a good day. <laughs> what were we talking about again? But regardless, I wanted to yap about this and I'm glad I got to. I hope you enjoyed. This was a very much yappy, all over the place garbage video, but I hope you enjoyed regardless. I swear, I promise, I'm not going to take 10 days to get to an upload again after this one. I had went on vacation to visit family for Thanksgiving. I've been busy as a bitch and I want to get back into uploading. I miss you guys. I'm glad to be here and I hope you enjoyed. Comment your thoughts on this game. AI games and more games, unlimited games, no bacon, whatever the hell, in the comments down below. And thank you for being here and thank you for being outstanding. Subscribe if you are new, like the video if you liked it, and dislike the video if you are an Elon stan. But just fun fact, there's no dislike button. You have to hit the like button to dislike it. It's a weird workaround. You can talk to the CEO of YouTube if you're curious. But thank you for being outstanding. And as always, adios, arrivederci, goodbye, good night. And, um, I, I, <laughs>